What it is, you guys, it's your girl Cadillac. I am Cadillac Dixon. I am the Draw My Life prison wife. I'm the legally blind artist that is rapping and painting for justice, <sighs> hoping to see justice before it all fades to black. Yeah, it's your girl Cadillac. Anyways, I am coming through on today. It is July the 10th. Um, first of all, I have to give a happy birthday, very happy birthday to my Auntie Louise. Um, we spent most of today basically just um, celebrating our birthday. Um, we did go to Golden Corral. I got a chance to vlog some of it. Um, I didn't want to vlog too much because um, you also want to be in the moment. <sighs> Also, after celebrating her birthday, we had to say goodbye to her because she's returning back home. Um, she stayed for a while, about a year. Actually, it's been almost exactly a year. And now she's going back home. So it's going to be kind of odd around the house, you know, because I'm used to, you know, seeing her right across the hall from me. <laughs> All right. Okay. So... I am kind of feeling down, you know, a little sad and a bit of touch of the blues or whatever. Okay, so if you see, I got on these glasses, girl, you know, I don't usually wear them glasses, but when you do see me with them on, y'all already know I broke my contact. Uh, that is the worst thing that really can happen. And what, uh, it's going to be a headache, literally a headache. So I got up this morning. Really what ended up happening, my nephew, Juju, he spent the night with me last night. Okay, so really, what did we do yesterday? I don't even remember what we did. Hmm. I think we went somewhere. What in the world did we do? But anyways, he did spend the night with me. I don't know what's wrong with me. I just can't. Oh, we went to Dairy Queen and stuff. Oh, and we said, that's what we did. We did Target for hours upon hours waiting on somebody to come out. Okay, so when we came from the Target and I ended up going home, I, I'm just like emotionally drained. It is so much going on. It's a lot of problems. It's a lot of things that I can't necessarily talk about right now. But it is too much going on. It's like layers and layers of problems. So for me, I don't know. I'm a very emotional person. So it's hard for me to not, you know, feel certain things. So basically, um, after leaving the Target, I think we got out at 11. Now, the joke was that we weren't leaving until Target, you know, they shut them lights off. And that was the truth. We literally did not leave until they shut the lights off at Target. So by the time we got home, it was about 11. I did try my usual to extend the night as much as I could because I wanted to work on stuff. I wanted to, you know, do as much as I could. But I ended up, I fell asleep. I fell asleep in my sister's recliner. Um, me and my nephew were watching TV. And when I woke up, I realized I had the contact still in my eye. Okay, which is really bad for anybody that wears contacts. But I, hear, I wear gas permeable contacts, which is those thick, they call them rigid contacts. They're, they're hard plastic. And let me tell you, they hurt. They hurt. So you're never supposed to sleep in them. Nobody's supposed to sleep in contacts, but you're really not supposed to sleep in those because they're really hard and they can mess up your eyes. And they further scratching, scratching, I'm sorry, my cornea. Um, I do have a scar on my left cornea and I have a little bit of scarring. I have a huge scar on the left cornea and I really don't even see anything out the left eye. It's just there. <laughs> Um, but the right cornea has a smaller scratch and you're not supposed to wear them like that going to sleep because it can further scratch your cornea. Okay, so I woke up a couple hours later and realized I fell asleep in my contact. And then my nephew, he was having issues because um, he does have the eczema 
and at night for some reason it flares up and he he just can't sleep so i'm trying to soothe him rub cream on him and get him to go back to bed okay so when i got up i i knew i had to take that contact out because i didn't want to fall asleep on my contact because it does cause me the next day to have a bad headache that i cannot get rid of cannot i don't care how many excedrin i take that headache does not go away okay so i took it out and i put it in the contact case i'm gonna show y'all a little later do you know i'm thinking i'm doing the right thing always thinking i'm doing the right thing but when i got up this morning so we can get ready to go out with my aunt i'm looking for my contact i'm like where the heck did i put my contact i was so tired the night before i literally did not know what case what contact case i put it in so for me because i have had issues in the past of being careless with my contact um, wrapping it up in a paper towel or putting it in a coke bottle top you know stuff silly stuff like that because i can't find my contact case i ended up buying several the big pack of contact cases and i literally leave a case everywhere around the house i have one in the in the car i have several i have one in my um bathroom um drawer i have one in my drawer in my room i have several around the house so I'm looking all through. I'm like, what freaking contact case did I put my contact in? So I'm like, okay, I'm going to chill. I'm just going to look. And eventually I find it. So when I calm myself down, I did find it. I said I wasn't going to overreact. I opened the case. And, oh, my God. Do you know I just want to cry? I want to cry. End up when I that sleepy, I had put my contact. I knew I put it in the case, right? But I didn't realize that the contact was kind of stuck in the. You know how um, most contact cases screw on the top. Okay, the contact was kind of stuck in one of the grooves, and when I screwed it on, I realized that I chipped the side of the contact. <sighs> When I look at it, I'm like, oh my gosh, maybe I could still wear it because it's just like a little bit of chipped on the side. So I'm trying to put it in my eye anyway. And I put it in, I can see, but I can't get it to stay like on my cornea where it's supposed to stay. And I'm trying, and I'm trying, I'm like, well, maybe if I make the little rigid part that broke off, if I have it like sitting at a certain, I don't know, I tried it with the rigid part on the top, on the side and then on the bottom anyway i put it in hurt it and i was like well maybe it's hurting just for a second and it'll stop eventually my daughter came and money was like mom don't try to leave that in your eye if it's hurting that means you have to take it out because it's gonna damage your eye and i'm like money i know but i, I want to be able to see i go through <sighs> I already know what I'm finna go through with this broken contact. Number one, last week I had a dream that I broke my contact. This actually be God telling me that this is about to happen. And it happens and I never freaking listen. I'm so sorry, God, because you be trying to warn me. I swear you do. And I just never, I, I don't know. I know from here, I learned my lesson because you have warned me before about them contacts. And the thing is, I should never have just one contact. I should always have to. When I first started wearing these contacts, um, they would recommend that you had three. I used to have both contact, uh, a contact on this eye and a contact on that eye. So if I broke one, I would be okay because I had the other eye. Well, this eye is so gone, so far gone that they no longer were able to make a contact for that eye. So I just wear the one on this side. So now I need to keep at least two contacts for this eye. Well, the problem is the contact is so freaking expensive. It's like 200 something per contact. And when my contact broke last time, I could only afford to replace it with one, which is kind of the situation now. I really only can afford one contact. So 
end up, I, when I had that dream that I broke my contact, which I really don't dream because I'm always tired. So if I remember a dream, I should have took heed to it because it really meant something. Okay, so end up, I, um, I'm probably going to only be able to order one. So I ordered one and I had it in my heart to keep to go ahead and order your next because due to Ovid and everything else, the delivery trucks are behind. Number one, it is a special made contact, special made. It takes a long time already to get a contact. It would take maybe three weeks because one time I broke my contact right i would break them in the worst times i broke them when it was my final and i tried to complete my final without barely being able to see um, i broke them right before my sister's wedding and i got my contact just in time during her wedding shower i couldn't see nothing that was going on i was struggling and then they got me these glasses that help a little bit but they can't you know they're they're not my contacts i can I can see just a tad bit better with the glasses, which any level of seeing better is better. But also by my eyes not being adjusted to these glasses, the glasses are also hurting my head. Whew. Oh, my goodness. Okay. So I ended up not being able to see anything through the shower. I didn't know what was going on. I could see figures and colors, but when it's like dark and stuff like that and lights, I really don't know what's going on or I got to get really close or squint. And then people are like, what are you doing that for? Like, I literally got to look like this. And they're like, what are you doing? Are you blind? And they're saying it in a, you know, funny, you know, laughable way. But yes, I really am blind. Okay, well, I'm legally blind. So, and then they like, how I just eyesight get that bad? Like, like basically, like you let it get that bad. But I have a rare eye disease. I have this stuff called keratoconus. And the only person I ever heard that had it was August Alcine, because they said it was something going on with his eye. And he said that he had keratoconus, but he had the surgery. And I think he also caught it in time where he was able to do some of this um, cross-linking stuff. But my eye is so far progress that I can't do the cross-linking. <sighs> anyway, so by the time the wedding came, my contact came in and I was able to see my sister get married. But it, it's irritating because already you're looking at about a three week wait for your contact. But with Ovid, last time it took a month and a half. Y'all, I can't, I can drive with my contact, but without my contact, I can't drive at night like that. I don't know how I'm gonna get back and forth to work like that. It, it's crazy. Now I got to try to depend on, you know, people to come pick me up and stuff like that. I don't know. Money says she'll try to help me if she can, but she's working and going on. So I know the first three days of my shifts, I work in the daytime. So I, you know, can see during the day. I'll be able to drive during the day. But those shifts where I get off at night, oh, but I only have two of them. And I'm probably going to have to see if money can... I don't know because I'll be able to get to work but then I'll need her to help me get home or something I don't know girl I hate dealing with this and then like now I was trying to work on my computer but it's crazy I gotta literally be all the way right up on the screen like on the screen I was just trying to optimize and release the um videos that I recorded from yesterday and today and just doing that you know I just hate the situation. Anyways, that's what's going on. Um, this is when I really become like the legally blind artist rapping and painting for justice. Oh my goodness. But I do have to be thankful and grateful because let me tell you, that kind of gets me into before because like I said, I have a rare eye disease, right? So I used to go to so many. All I knew was I started losing my vision. Don't know why, how, who, what, or where. All I know, and I noticed 
Um, first, when I was in hair school, when they gave me a book and I realized all the words were kind of jumbled together, they were weird and overlapping and stuff. And then it just got worse and worse and worse. And then also I used to be a door greeter at Walmart and I used to would be dancing at the door. Like I told you, I was a rapper. I used to perform. <laughs> it was so crazy. I would have my um, demo on a, a chain taped around my neck. And I would stand there all night and write my songs and basically perform my songs so that I could um, get my lyrics and stuff down pat. But when I went to the studio so that I didn't waste no time, it was I was one take wonder, one take, <laughs> one take and then drop them ad libs and we good girl. <laughs> And I would be dancing at the door and my friend would be at the other door, door greeting. And I could wave to her and she would literally see me and I could see her. But then it started getting to the point when I would wave at her and I couldn't even see. I couldn't see like a few feet to the register that's in front of the door there. And that's when I started noticing it was like my eyesight just went overnight. It started becoming to where I couldn't see my face in the mirror. I couldn't see my hands. And if I looked down, I couldn't even see my feet. So ended up, I do have a story time, an in-depth story time. I'll try to find that and link that in the description box below. I also do have a channel that is was devoted strictly towards being legally blind and my art. It's not prison wife related at all. I'm trying to separate my content, my prison wife stuff on this side and my legally blind journey on that side. Um, I can link that in the description box. But let me tell you, when they got them contacts and for the first time I was actually able to see. So I went seven years without being able to barely even see. <laughs> and when I finally put those in and I see my face for the first time. And I see my hand, the texture of my hand. I didn't know my hands were getting all rough like that, girl. I thought they were still smooth. <laughs> I seen the age on my hands, and I couldn't see that before. But, um, you know, when they say I once was blind, but now I see. Yes, that's how it is. Okay, so I don't even know where we left on because my little nephew came and interrupted me. Just come and find me. He claimed he's my manager. I told them, look, baby, I've been begging y'all to help with this little YouTube channel. I was asking them, please, you don't even have to watch my content. Just put it on play and let it play and um, put it on mute, on silent, and just sit it to the side. Go to one of my um, playlists and just play them straight through, and I would get watch time, and then YouTube algorithm of it algorithm would eventually you know trigger and see that people are watching my video straight through and then show it to more people right they couldn't even do that girl like how easy could it be you don't have to really watch my stuff just pretend you're watching it and eventually once it take off you don't have to watch nothing right but finally i told them look they started watching but girl it's almost too late why, why you ain't support me from the beginning girl like for real but anyways i was telling them this is like knowing the arc you better get on the arc is about to take off what's the arc take off girl you ain't getting on it's gonna start. I'm, I'm telling you get on the arc now do y'all see i'm actually at 398 I was getting subscribers fast, but it seems like the more I approach the 400 um, subscribership, the harder. Okay, so anyways, the closer I get to 400, the more it comes to a <laughs> stop. Like, I'm trying to hit that 